In this tutorial, I will be mapping a five-tier cake with round bases using MadMapper projection mapping software. I will start with a quick explanation of the challenges of mapping a round cake. Then I will cover how to set up our two projectors and do our projection mapping. Finally, I will introduce edge blending down the central seam of the cake and talk about what kind of video content works best for this task. If you're new to the channel, I make projection mapping tutorials and projects, so please consider subscribing if you haven't already and like this video if you enjoy it. These are polystyrene cake dummies, which are fine for practicing on. If these were iced or if I were using a real cake with the same dimensions, the process of mapping them would be exactly the same as the one I'll be outlining. Each of the tiers are five inches high. Moving from top to bottom, the diameters of the tiers are 8 inches, 10 inches, 12 inches, 14 inches and 16 inches. This is the size I'm recommending based on the fact that I think its proportions are attractive. I also think it's big enough to make a statement and the surface area that requires content is manageable with full HD projectors. I will make the guide I'm going to use available for free for you to download as well as some test content for you to use as well. I'm using two full HD projectors which are positioned either side of the cake. The projectors are running off a MacBook Pro. The projectors are connected with mini display port to HDMI cables. These cables run out from my two Thunderbolt 2 display outputs which support mini display port on my MacBook Pro and go into the HDMI connections in the back of my projectors. I've listed all my materials and kit, including the projector models, at the link in the description. Opening up MadMapper, this is what we see. I'm going to add a quad surface and by default, the test card checkerboard is assigned to it. I don't see anything out of my projectors until I set them up as outputs. I do that inside Manage Outputs, which is accessed by clicking this little projector icon in the top left. I can see that I have one output, projector one. If I click on it, I can confirm that its output destination is my first projector. I add another output by clicking this plus icon and projector two is created. Now I set its output destination to my second projector. In order to see something out of my projectors, I head up to output and enter full screen mode. If, like me, your projectors are the same make and model, and you're not sure which is left and which is right, you can toggle the output on and off to get some visual feedback and work out which is which. I'm going to rename my projectors accordingly. Select the right-hand projector and move its yellow output to the right-hand side of the left projector's output. If you have snap enabled by toggling on this magnet, you will feel the right projector output snapping into place beside the left projector output. I want to talk a bit about the challenges of mapping a curved surface like these round cake tiers. In our test card checkerboard, I will just increase the count a bit so we have a higher density of black and white squares. Now if I hold up a piece of white card in front of the projector, we can see that the squares, broadly speaking, maintain their proportions and remain even-sided with no squashing or stretching. This card approximates what would be considered the optimum projection surface, flat and at 90 degrees, in other words perpendicular, to the projector's beam. However, look at how the squares appear when they hit the curved surface of the cake. Where the surface is just about perpendicular to the projector lens, the squares are regular-ish, but as we move out to the side and the surface of the cake tiers make an increasingly extreme angle with the projector, the squares become very distorted. It is this phenomenon that we will be working against and trying to compensate for with the mapping process. Compare the way the squares look on the round cake to the way they appear on a square-based cake. Even though there is distortion present, it isn't nearly so extreme. The aim of what we are doing here with the projection mapping process is to correct for distortion and make the cake surface appear like a screen. To that extent, mapping a round cake presents much more of a challenge than a square-based cake. 
You can watch a tutorial on how to map a square-based cake in MadMapper by clicking the card. Another advantage of the square-based cake is that you can't see the back surfaces so easily unless you go right around behind the cake. In contrast, we can easily see the point at which the projection falls off the edge of the round surface, especially when using one projector. Therefore, I highly recommend using at least two projectors, as I will be doing. Back in Manage Surfaces mode, we can see the white outlines of our two projector outputs here in our preview output window. I'm going to import a guide by going to File, Import Media and navigating to the file. I can see it has appeared in images on the right hand side. With my quad selected, if I double click on the thumbnail of my guide, it gets assigned to that quad and I can see it in my input and output preview windows. The next step is to set up our input surfaces. I'm going to view just the input so that we have more space. Now I'm going to rename quad one to left one and pull the bounding box so that it fits around the top left hand tear face. I can duplicate this surface by either going to Edit, Duplicate Selected Surface, or by using the shortcut that is listed beside, in my case on a Mac, Command D. I will rename this Left 2, then I pull it down and move the edge so that it fits around the second tier down on the left. I'll do this for all the tiers, renaming as I go. I can duplicate the left-hand side surfaces and move them over to become those on the right-hand side. Now we have created all of our input surfaces, we can group them by selecting them all and adding them to a group with this folder icon. I'll rename it Cake. Now we can select all those surfaces at once just by selecting the group. With all of our inputs defined, we can now turn our attention to our output. I will maximize the preview output view using this icon here. With all the surfaces selected, by clicking and dragging on this handle, we can scale them while maintaining their proportions until they are roughly the height of one of the cake tiers. This will save us having to scale each one individually. I find it easier to do mapping one surface at a time, so I will select all the surfaces except one and turn off their visibility. With only left one visible, you can zoom in either using the scroll wheel of your mouse, two finger zooming on your trackpad, or using the shortcut Command plus or minus on a Mac to zoom in and out respectively, which is Control plus and minus on Windows. You can also pan around the preview window by holding the spacebar and clicking and dragging until the surface is comfortably in the middle of your preview window. You might also want to turn on cursor display by going to output and selecting cursor, which shows you crosshairs of your mouse position in the output, which can be helpful. At this point, you want to physically position yourself so that you have a good view of the left side of the cake. Pull the surface roughly into position on the top left hand side by clicking inside the surface and dragging it to its new position. These right hand control points belong down the central seam, so try and eyeball where that is and keep it straight. For these left hand points, you need to find a balance between going so far round the back of the cake that the projection falls onto the wall behind, which we don't want, and trying to preserve the squares of the guide. When the corners are roughly in position, turn on Mesh Warping on the left and select Bezier. Click the corner points and these black handles will appear. Pull them around to help you bend the output to better match the cylindrical shape of the tier. Pull them up and down to introduce a curve on the content, but also play around with moving them left and right, 
and notice how that impacts how the squares of the guide are squashed and stretched. Remember, your aim is always to try and maintain evenly distributed squares that are not too squashed and stretched on any axis so as to become rectangular. This is not easy to achieve. You will notice that the parts of the tier that are closer to the projector will display squares that are a little squashed, whereas at the edges where the cake surface forms a more and more extreme oblique angle with the projector, the squares start to stretch. Do your best to find a compromise. We will be choosing content that will be sympathetic to any distortion we have not been able to overcome and will not draw too much attention to any issues that remain. This is often the way with projection mapping, trying to mitigate the difficulties of a situation and then selecting content that will help disguise them and maintain the illusion. I will now move on to left 2 by making it visible again. By clicking and dragging in the centre of the surface, I will move it roughly into position, then clicking the corner points I will find that central seam. and then move the left hand points round the back of the cake. Then I select mesh warping, bezier, and adjust those handles. In an alternative approach to this cake mapping task, we might employ more projectors. Then we would not have to project from such extreme angles because there would be more pixels to go around but it's not always practical or economical to have many projectors. So again, it's a case of finding a compromise and a balance. You'll notice the further we go down the cake, the more warping we are having to do. My projector is about at the height of the top tier. This just reinforces the idea that the more extreme the angle between the surface and the projector lens, the more distortion will be present. Do you remember how within Manage Outputs, we put our right output next to our left? Well, all the output mapping we just did took place inside the left-hand projector's output. It makes sense that the left surfaces got mapped inside the left output. Now when we turn on the visibility of our first right-hand surface, we need to move it over to our right output area for it to start coming out of our right projector. Now, just as before, I want to position myself so that I'm looking at the right side of the cake. I am mapping quite roughly for the purposes of this tutorial, and I would take a lot more care if it were for a real event. Do your best to even out as much distortion as possible with this process, but bear in mind that you might not be able to eliminate distortion altogether. In that case, you should be smart about using content. For example, being aware of the fact that any squashing and stretching can be very problematic if you are projecting photos of people as your subjects are unlikely to want their features distorted, or if you are using animations or images with straight lines or familiar shapes like squares or circles, because the viewer's eye will be drawn to any deviations from what it expects to see. I'm going to select the group and all the surfaces inside and double click on solid color in the generators library. I'll change the color to white. I find it's often helpful to do this because the solid white color sometimes exposes some problems with our mapping that our guide did not reveal. One thing I'm noticing immediately is that the white does not look the same on each half of the cake. Even though my projectors are the same make and model, the lamp inside one of them is a little older than the other. Even though the settings, brightness, contrast, etc. are exactly the same for both projectors, the lamps are producing a disparity in brightness. Because this is just a tutorial, I'm not too concerned and it illustrates a good teaching point, which is that different projectors can display the same content differently. They can have different brightnesses and different abilities to produce color and contrast. So this is something to bear in mind. I'm going to try and improve the problem of the central seam by introducing some edge blending where the left and right projector outputs meet. 
I'll reassign the guide by double clicking on it. I will also turn on Soft Edge, which now applies to all the surfaces contained in the group. Now with Soft Edge enabled, where MadMapper detects there is overlapping content, it will soften the edge of the surface where the overlap occurs. Right now we don't have any overlap, but we could introduce some. Head back into our input view. I'm going to demonstrate this first with just the top tier. Pull the right hand edge of your top left tier so that it now incorporates one column of squares from the right hand side. Then select the right top tier surface and mirror that process by dragging on the left hand edge and pulling it around one column of squares from the left hand side. Go back into our output. Now if we select our cake group and scroll down to soft edge, if we hit auto setup, notice how the regions of overlapping content get given a soft edge. We want to adjust this mapping for left one and right one by pulling it over by one square. Make small adjustments until the overlapping content sits one on top of the other. Now if we select the group and reassign a solid colour, we can see that we have eliminated the hard edge and any black pixel sneaking through. But we have solved one problem and created another. Where the white content is doubled up, it looks much brighter and now we see a white band in the overlapping regions. Click on the surfaces and scroll down to the soft edge settings. Play around with these until you achieve a look you find satisfactory. This might be by increasing the width of the fade. If we know there is a small issue with a band of brightness down the front, we should stay clear of content that will draw attention to this. This is an example of trying to be strategic when it comes to selecting video content. I will now go through the same process with the remaining tiers. Expand the input surfaces so they enclose one column of squares from the other side. Select the tiers and hit Auto Setup so that MadMapper can do some of the work for you. Then make adjustments as necessary. All that remains to do is assign our chosen content to our surfaces. This might be some of the inbuilt generators from MadMapper's library, which can all be customised, for example the animation speed and the colour. I will provide a link where you can download this particle cascade and use it yourself. I have lots of other cake mapping video animations that you can purchase in my store. I hope this tutorial helped you. Please drop any questions or comments down below. I always try to respond to people if I can. Please do me a favour and like this video and share it if you think it could help someone else. If you'd consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the bell, you won't miss out on my future cake mapping and projection mapping tutorials and videos.